fischia. Ah. So I don't take so much trouble. On a weekday to see so many people seems rather absurd, doesn't it? I hope, one hopes that you all take the trouble to listen to each other. Last time that we met here, it was on Saturday, we talked about what is love. You may remember it, if you are here. And we are going to inquire together, I mean together, into this whole problem, which is very, very complex. And so, if you don't mind, you have to think. Not just agree. I say yes, you're so right. And then do go your own way. So we are going to inquire together into this problem of what is love. Together. Not that the speaker is the only talker, but together. We go we're going to examine. This is not a lecture, not to instruct or guide or help. That would be too stupid. Because we've had all that kind of help for generations upon generations. And we are what we are now. We must start what we are now, not what we have been in the past or what we shall be in the future. What we shall be in the future is what you are now. Right? What we are now, our greed, our envy, our jealousy, our great superstitions, our desire for to wash somebody, worship somebody, to say you are a holy man and all that tummy rot. This is so, this is not a lecture, not an entertainment, not something you just accept or deny, but we are talking over like two friends, if you like, two enemies across the board. But we are talking together. So you have to exercise your brain, drive it, force it, think it out. So we are going to go into this question. What is love? And to inquire very deeply, profoundly into it, we must also inquire first what is the energy? Energy. Every gesture you make is based on energy. While we are listening to the speaker, you are exercising your energy. To come here from a long distance, from Benares or still further up, you have to use a great deal of energy. Right? To build a house, to plant a tree, 
to make a gesture, to talk from the childhood, from the baby, the first cry of a baby is based on energy, supplied for the moment by the mother, and so on. And so, on. so we must inquire what is energy. Are you alright? Can I can we go on? I can go on, the speaker can go on indefinitely. Because he had been at it for sixty years or seventy years, putting the same thing in different words. So if you kindly seriously listen, because hearing is a great art, perhaps one of the great arts to listen to what the other person has to say, not to interrupt, not to say, yes, I agree with you, and let's talk about something else. We have to inquire first if you can listen at all. This is not a lecture or instruction and all that stuff. We are together examining, questioning, doubting, never, never accepting what the speaker says. Never. Right? Don't say yes, we agree, but then go on accepting. He is no authority. So we we'll start. What is energy? This being one of the questions of the scientist. And they said energy is matter. Right? But previous to that, what is energy? You understand? It may be matter, it may be every kind of thing. But what is energy? Primordial energy. Who brought this energy about? Are you understanding what I'm talking about? I'm not sure. Because this has been a very, very serious question. So we are together going to, taking a long journey into this. Together, you and I are walking up the same street. You are not just following the speaker. You are not just here. Yes, that sounds very good. So did the Upanishads and Gita and all that Bill had said. So we will understand. It isn't a bit like that. First of all, one has to have great doubt. Right? Great scepticism. Right, sir? No, don't agree, please. Don't agree. You don't doubt anything. You accept everything. So doubt, scepticism of your own experience, of your own thoughts, of your own conclusions, doubting, question. Not accepting a thing from any book, including mine. I'm just a passerby, it's not important. And we are going to inquire together, it's very important, please. Together. You know what that means? Cooperating together to build something, to inquire something, to See what is clear, what is doubtful, what is not clear. You are doing it, Nas. I am the speaker has done this, but you have to do it. So we are together walking up a very long stream. You can make that stream a very, very, very strong current, 
will wipe you away, throw you on two banks, or you can deal with it. So it requires your in energy, right? It requires your energy. So we are asking, what is energy? That crow calling is part of energy. Right? The trees, the birds, the stars, the moon, the rising of the sun and the setting of the sun, it's all energy. Right? Probably you doubt it, but it doesn't matter. And whatever you speak requires energy. The first cry of the baby out of the womb, that cry is part of that energy, right? To play a violin, to speak, to marry, sex, everything on earth is, requires energy, right? So we are inquiring together what is this energy, what is the origin, what is the source, how has it begun, who created this energy. Please careful, don't say God and run away with that. I don't accept God. A speaker has no God. Is that all right? You accept that? You will accept anything, so I don't mind. I'll go. So please don't allow yourself to accept what the speaker is saying at any moment in his books, in his talks, in his video, and all that, all that business. So, what is this energy? We cannot possibly exist without this energy, right? There is no existence on earth without this energy. The trees, tremendous energy, to pull up water right to the top, tons of water. That is tremendous energy. To build an aeroplane. Hundreds of people are responsible for it. Go to the moon and so on. So whatever we do or don't do is energy. Right? The dancer, the violinist, the painter, the house mother, the army general, everything requires energy. Right? That's, that is a fact, whether you accept it or not, it doesn't matter. And we are inquiring, what is that energy? The origin of it, not just yes, energy, or accept what the scientists say, which is, energy is matter, and so I won't go into all that, because I'm, the speaker has talked to many of them about this matter. And the religious people say, God, and that ends it. Or some guru says, that also ends it. They don't inquire, they don't doubt, they don't question, they don't, they don't have skepticism. Right? So here we are saying, if you can abandon all that, your books, what the Sanskrit Ancient people say, abandon all that and leave it at the roadside. And we'll take a journey together. If you can't put all that aside or leave it on the roadside, you can't follow the speaker. You can't understand the speaker. Right? Don't bother to understand it. <laughs> Doesn't matter. But unfortunately, you, have, you hear a lot of words, and you say, yes, that's, that sounds reasonable, and so on and so on. 
We are not dealing with words. Words are not the mountain. The word mountain is not the mountain. Right? The word K is not K. You understand all this? So, your name is not you. But to this to recognize you. But your name is not you. I think this is important to understand. The word is not the actual. Right? Is that clear? The word is not the tree. The word tree is not that. Right? So, we have to be very careful now not to be entangled with words. I want you to follow all this. Right, I can go on, because my friend's giving me a signal. My old friends. And we are going to something that requires all your energy, all your brain, which is matter, which is the accumulated experience of million years, and all that evolution means energy, right? So I'm saying to my, I'm asking myself, you're asking for yourself. So I'm beginning to ask myself, is there energy which is not contained or stimulated or held within the field of knowledge? You understand? Within the field of knowledge. That is within the field of thought. Then this requires. Please don't agree with it. I like to blind myself. Because you agree with every damn thing that's going on. So I ask myself, is there an energy which is not put together, stimulated, arranged by thought. You understand? Thought gives you a great deal of energy. To go to the office every morning at 9 o'clock or 8.30, thought makes you, gives you that energy. Right? I must earn more money. I have a better house, right? Thought, thinking, gives you the energy. I believe it took two or three hundred people or three thousand people to build a rocket that went to the moon. Right? So, all that requires energy. To shake hands with to say how are you, to recognize old friends sitting across there. I'm glad that lit up all the place. We can see each other. So I ask myself, I know thought, thinking, thinking about the past, thinking about the future, planning for the present. That gives a tremendous energy, right? Right, sir? Thinking, I must build a house. So I go to the architect, I agree with him, and so on, so on. And it's, you require a great deal of energy to be educated, right? From ignorance, as they call it. I'm not saying it is ignorance. From not knowing mathematics, you gradually learn and energy.
college, university, and then you become some kind of something or other. And you have a job to that. Every day of your life you go. Or you retire at an early, early age and die. So, thought, please understand this, it's very important if you will. Thought creates this energy to build an aeroplane. Hmm? Think of what has gone into that. Hundreds of people have worked at it. Step by step by step. Constructed it and they produced 747 or whatever it is, the most marvelous machine that can never go wrong or man can make it go wrong and so on and so on. So thought is an extraordinary instrument of creating energy. Right? May I go? If one doesn't see that as an actual fact, then you're off the mark. Right? If you don't see it as an actual fact, that thought creates tremendous energy. You want to become a rich man, you work like blazes to work to get a rich man. Right? You want to do some kind of crazy propaganda, and you work very hard. You join groups, sex gurus and all the rest of that business. So thought as, a, as an extraordinary instrument of engendering thought, right? Thought engendering energy, right? Don't agree. So then we have to inquire into the very, very, very nature of thought, right? Not say, but all the excuses. Don't bother about this. I fell yesterday and I hurt myself. That's all. That's over. You can give your attention to something else. So thought which has planned this society, which has divided the world into Asia and Europe, the communist, the socialist, the capitalist and the democratic republican, all that is created by thought. It's simple. The army, the navy, the air force, to kill, not only for transportation, but also to care. This is so obvious, isn't it? So thought is very important in our life, because without thought we can't do anything. Right? For you to come here from your distance required planning, adjusting, taking a train, aeroplane, taking a bus, etc., etc. All that is part of your thinking, right? So what is thinking? You work it out, don't listen to me. What is thinking? You can't live without certain kind of thinking, right? Planning, going back to your house, going back to do your work and so on, your marriage, sex and everything is contained in the process of thought. So what is thinking? The speaker has talked about it a lot. So don't go, go back to his books. Don't say, yes, I've heard that before. But here you forget all the books, all the things you have read. We must approach this each time anew. So thinking is based on 
knowledge, right? If you have no knowledge, how to come here or take a bus or this or that, you wouldn't be here. So, knowledge, memory, thought, right? Then And we have accumulated tremendous knowledge. How to sell each other, how to exploit each other, how to build bridges, how to create gods and temples. We have done all that. The various ashramas, where they are all, you know, all that, is, concentration camps of certain kinds. So thought has done all this, created the army, the navy, the aeroplane. Thought has also, through knowledge, uh, temple and all that business. So, without experience there is no knowledge. Right? Be logical, sir. Logic is necessary up to a certain point, but if you start without logic, clarity, then you can, you can do, you become superstitious, imaginative, coming to conclusions, building temples and all that kind of nonsense. So, without experience, there is no knowledge. The scientists are adding every day something new. Please follow this care, if you don't mind. Experience is limited, right? Because you are adding more and more to it, to knowledge. Experience, knowledge, stored in the brain as memory, and then that is the beginning of thought. Right? Am I, am I right or you are right? What do you say? God, don't you feel anything? So, experience is always limited. Right? Because you are adding more and more and more every day in the scientific world, in your own life, you learn something more. So, Experience is limited, therefore knowledge is limited, memory is limited, and therefore thought is limited. Right? Am I sane or insane? And we live by thought. So we never recognize, though thought can imagine most extraordinary heaven and hell, the Olympic gods of the Greeks, the Egyptian gods. You know anything about all that? No, it doesn't matter. So, your thought is always limited. And your gods whom thought is created will always be limited. Right? I know you don't like this, but I'm, don't hear it. Your gods, your thinking, however wide it may be, or however narrow it may be, all this is limited. And from this limitation, we try to find the energy. You understand what I'm saying? We try to find the origin, the beginning of creation. So, thought has created fear, right? No? Hasn't it? Aren't you frightened of what may happen uh, 
two years later? No? Yeah. Aren't you frightened of losing your job, of not passing exams, of not climbing the ladder? You know what I mean, climbing the ladder, getting more and more and more successful. And you are frightened of not being able to fulfil. You are frightened of not being able to stand alone, be strong to yourself, right? You always depend on somebody. All that breeds tremendous fear, right? Won't you blink at me? So, it's one of our daily facts that we are frightened people, right? Would you agree to that very simple fact that we are frightened people? And fear arises when you want security, right? You just listen. All right, I'll go on. Don't bother. I go. Fear destroys love. You cannot have love without uh, cannot have love cannot exist where fear is. Fear is a tremendous energy on its own. And love has no relationship with fear. They are totally divorced. Right? So, what is the origin of fear? Right? All this is to understand, to be alive to the nature of love. If you don't understand all this, then go and carry on whatever you are doing. Be happy with it, enjoy yourself, making money, possessions and all the blood. But if you want to go into this very carefully, you have not only to examine what is thinking. And the machine, the computers are doing that marvelously. You don't know anything, the latest. I talked to some of the professors in England just before I came to India, before the speaker came to India. There are computers that can think backwards and forwards. You understand what that means? They can think what I have, one has to get up at six, therefore it has to plan to get up at six. Right? And after six, what it has to do? And I believe that's called forgotten. It'll come back. So the machines, please understand this program. The machines, which is the computer, you know that joke? One is praying for God, and there is a computer next door. And she's at his knees. And the computer says, Whom are you praying to? God is here. <laughs> no, sir, you don't know how serious it is. So, architecture, that's the word. When, I only learned this recently, and it may be wrong, it may be right. A computer can think what has happened and plan what will happen and for the future, which is the brain is doing. You understand? You plan to come here, you spend so much money, so much time, and then go back, go forward. So the computers can think forward and backward. 
which is called architecture, I believe they may have changed their name by now. I'm going to ask one of the specialists here. So, thinking has created fear. Right? Thinking about the future, thinking about the past, and being not being able to adjust quickly to a, to the environment, and so on, so on. So thought and time, right? No, you don't understand. I'll go. Thought of tomorrow, what might happen? My wife might leave me, or might die. I'm a lonely man. And then what am I to do? I have several children, so I better marry. Remarry someone or other. Because at least they can look after my children. And so that is thinking of the future based upon the past, right? And so thinking and time are involved in this. Right? Thinking about the future, future being day after tomorrow or tomorrow, and thinking about that causes fear, right? So time, thought are the factors of fear. And we know we have examined thought, we have examined time. Time is the past, the present and the future, rising the sun and the setting of the sun, planting a seed and becoming a huge tree. That's time. And also we have got the inward time. I am this, but I will become a rich millionaire. I am greedy, but give me time, I won't be. Next slide, perhaps. And so on, and so on. So time and thought are the central factors of fear. I'm looking for a clock. Ten past six. What? Ten past six. Half past six. Ten. Ten minutes past six. six tenths. Seven? Six tenths. Six tenths. What? Six tenths. Eccolo, grazie. I mean, thank you. So I've talked for an hour and a quarter. bad. <laughs> so, let me finish this. Allow me another 20 minutes, if you don't mind. Do you mind? I won't keep you very long. It won't make any difference if you listen to me or not. You will carry on exactly the same way as you've been living. You won't change, you won't do a thing, because you're caught in a rut, in a groove, in a pattern. And you will go on, and death is there. Right? So we are inquiring into something which you may not understand, but doesn't matter. So time, thought are our, our principal factors of life. And both time inwardly, I am this, but I will be that, or I have been, I shall be, I am, I shall be. All that is more time. And time is thought. They are not two separate things. They are both movements.
then what place has death? You shall say, what place in my life has death, suffering, pain, anxiety, loneliness, all those terrible things I've gone through? Merci. So I better take your watch, whoever gave it to me. I might lose it, or you might lose it. You understand, sir? Please understand this very carefully. Time, hope are our, our central factors of life. And we are saying thought and time are the factors of fear. That's a fact, whether you like it or not. So what has suffering to do with time? Are you following all this? What has suffering, pain, anxiety, loneliness, despair, and all the travail that man goes through, what has that? Is that all our life? You understand what I'm asking you? We are journeying together. You are not just sitting there and listening to a nonsensical speaker. I'm asking you, this is your life, right, sir? Facts, not imagination. You're born educated and you fit into BAs, MAs and all the rest of PhDs in order to get a job or you become a great uh, Prime Minister or Minister, for God's sake, you understand? This is your life. This is your consciousness. Your consciousness is composed of your fears, of your knowledge, of your time, you know, consciousness. Your knowledge, everything, it is your consciousness. And in that consciousness of which you are, that consciousness, you've always thought you it's yours, mine, my consciousness. Do you understand my question? Don't cross your legs, Let's sit comfortably as you are, but I'm looking at you. Don't suddenly change. Your consciousness, if you examine it very carefully, not examine it through judgments and evaluations, what you know, but if you examine it very carefully, your consciousness is made up of its content. Right? Do you understand what I'm saying? What you think, what your tradition, what your education, how many fears, whether you want to exchange your wife for a new wife, or whether you are go, go to a certain temple, all that loneliness, fear, is, your, is what you are. You may think you are divine inside, but still you are thinking. When you say, yes, there is God in me, is still the product of thought. Your consciousness, which is what you are, not physically, but psychologically, inwardly, which is your consciousness, is the consciousness of mankind. Listen carefully, man, don't accept anything he says. <coughs> Every human being on this earth goes through this sorrow pain, anxiety, uncertainty, insecurity, quarrels, <coughs> coaxing, wanting this, not wanting this, so all that is what you are. Don't imagine, if you imagine that you are a God in, incarnate, that's part of thought. Right? 
tortures this point out, that's limited. So, your consciousness, what you are, is the rest of mankind. Every man goes through this, <coughs> or every hu- woman, <coughs> every human being goes through this. Right? Every human being, your neighbour, your father, your grandfather, and the past generations all over the world. So you are not individuals. This is a blow. Don't accept it. Examine it. Don't say it's right or it is not a fact. Because Gita says something, or Upanishad says something, or the Bible says something. It's a fact that you, your suffering, your pain, your anxiety, your loneliness, your knowledge is common to, not I won't use common, is shared by every human being. Right? So you are not a separate soul, a separate Atma. I know you don't like this, because you are brought up to swallow anything that goes wrong. So, there must be freedom from fear, from hurts, from every kind of thing human beings have put together. There must be freedom, you understand, not just words. India must be free from the rest of the world, that's just nonsense. Nobody can live by themselves. They need a friend, they need somebody to help. So, we are trying to find out, inquire into what is love. Right? We are saying, as long as there is fear of any kind, biologically, fear of attachment, fear of loss, fear of any kind, the other cannot exist. If there is any kind of attachment, the other cannot exist, the other being love. So we are going to inquire if time allows. Then seeing all this from the beginning, from the, from the baby till the grown up man, seeing what the world is, and inquiring into what is death. Why are we all so frightened of death? You understand? You know what it means to die? Haven't you seen dozens of people killed, or hurt, or... Haven't you? No? Are you strange people or what? Belong to a different planet? You've seen death. We have never inquired very deeply into what is death. It's a very important question as what is life? You see? We said life is all this. Rot. We have said life is knowledge, learning, uh, you know, all that stuff. Going to office regularly every day at nine o'clock or ten o'clock, quarterly, factory, wanting this and not wanting this. We know what living is, right? A series of actions produces a series of inactions. And 
sarupino. That's all life. Then, if that is living, which it is, don't say yes, living is something extraordinary or upstairs. This is living, quarrelling, divorcing, fighting. And then, but we have never inquired seriously into what is dead. You understand what I am talking about? We know what is living, if you are honest. And you can imagine anything you like, but this is living. You can imagine heaven is there and God's are looking after you, every prayer is answered and all that rot, at least for me, <coughs> for the speaker. But we have never seriously inquired into what is dying. All right, sir? What is dying? It must be an extraordinary thing to die. No? Extraordinary thing. Everything has been taken away from you. Your attachments, your money, your wife, your children, your country, your superstitions, your gurus, your gods, everything is gone, right? You may wish to take him to the other world, but you can't take your money, your bank account, right? Your attachments, your gurus, you are temples, you can invent temples up there, not up to your dead. But while living, you can invent all the gods on earth. But when death comes, it says, Look, you cannot take anything with you. All your attachments, all your affections, all your hurts, all the things that you have gathered in life. There you, you can't carry. There is no space for that. Right? So that says, be totally detached. Right? That's what happens when death comes. You have no person to lean on. No, nothing. Right? Have you understood me? You can believe that you will be reincarnated next life. That's a very comforting idea. But it may not be a fact. It may be your imagination, your longing, your I can't leave my wife, I've left so much for my son, but I'll meet him next life, so I'll tell him off. Hmm? And so on. So we are trying to find out what, is, what it means to die. Why living, not committing suicide, I'm not talking about that kind of nonsense. I want to find out what it means to die. Not jump in the river, I don't mean that. Or go off to the Himalayas and die there. But I want to find out for myself what it means to die. Which means, can I be totally free from the everything that man has created, including myself? You know, there is an Italian joke, sorry, I have to repeat it. The whole world will die, perhaps including me. So I want to find out what the actual fact 
when death says enough. Right? Do you want to find out? No. Do you really want to find out? What does it mean to die? Give up everything, right? Not sacrifice, death says that. Don't use those silly words. It cuts you off with a very, very, very sharp razor from your attachments, from your gods, from your superstitions, from your desire for comfort, next life, and so on, and so on, so on. So I'm going to find out what death means. Because it's as important as living. living. So how can I find out? Actually, not theoretically, make, evaluations about it and past formed societies and, you know, all the circus. But I actually want to find out, as you want to find out. I'm speaking for you, so don't go to sleep. So what does it mean to die? One is very healthy, the body is functioning, there is no disease like K. At night one has no disease, no pain, etc. Et well, I've seen experts at doctors. So, what does it mean to die? Put that question to yourself, don't listen to me. When we are young or when we are very old, this question is always there, right? It's always asking, demanding what it means to die. Are you interested in this? Are you? Oh, no, don't shake your head, sir. Do you know what it means? To be totally free, to be totally unattached to everything that man has put together, all what you have put together, totally free. No attachment, no gods, no future, no past. We don't know what it all means, sir. You don't see the beauty of it, the greatness of it, the extraordinary strength of it. So, while living, to be dying. You understand what that means? While you are living, every moment you are dying. So, throughout life you are not attached to a thing. Your wife, your father, your mother, your grandmother, your country, your nothing. Because that, that's what death means. Right? You may wish for another life, that's all too, too easy, too simple, too idiotic. So, living is dying. Do you understand what I'm saying? Living means every day you are abandoning everything that you are attached to. What you worship, what you think, what you don't think, your gods, your country, nothing. Can you do this? Can you do this? A very simple fact. 
but it's got tremendous implications. So that each day is a new day. You understand? Each day you are by dying and incarnating the, the head. This tremendous vitality, energy there. You understand? Because there is nothing you are afraid of. There is nothing that can hurt, hurt being hurt. It doesn't exist. Thought is limited, therefore it has no importance. It has importance because I have to get up and go in five minutes. But time, thought, fear, attachment, and all the things that man has put together has been totally abandoned. That's what it means to die. You may be, God may be waiting to save you in heaven. It's all some sort of ridiculous. So can you do it? Will you try it? Will you experiment with it? Not for just a day, every day. Yes, I can't do it. Your brains are not trained for this. Your brains have been conditioned so heavily by your education, by your tradition, by your books, by your professors, by your all the rest of it. This requires to find out what is love. Love and death go together. But death says, be free, non-attached, nothing you can carry. With you. And love says, love says, there is no word for it. So, love is, can exist only when there is freedom. Not from your wife, for a new girl or a new husband. But the feeling, the enormous strength, the vitality, the energy of complete freedom. Next time we meet, <coughs> we'll talk about religion and meditation. I hope that's all right. I'm sorry there are only three talks, but the speaker cannot carry on. You understand? He's 91, and that's good enough. So, It's over, sir.